How's it going everybody? In this video, we will begin our Layer 2 Technologies section for our CCMP Route Switch 300-101 exam. And basically what we're going to be taking a look at is going to be configuring, verifying, and authenticating PPP. So basically we're going to be paying attention to 2.1a at the top here. We're just going to be taking a look at this section right here for the time, for in this video. So basically what we wanted to cover is you know what PPP is and the details behind it and then the actual protocol itself is actually very very simple very very lightweight and then we'll take a look at authenticating it both way or the, the different ways that there is to authenticate it and things like that so um, as you can see there isn't very much in PPP to play with so one of the things that I didn't do was I didn't go through to and deal with multi-link PPP which would be where you'd have, say for instance, two T1 lines that you would bond together to make a single three meg circuit instead of two one and a half meg circuits. So I'm going to bring over Notepad++, which is covering PPP. And I'm going to go over the, just, the, just the basic com uh, details to it, and we'll get into the actual configuration of it. So it's a media independent encapsulation, so it can run on serial interfaces, Ethernet interfaces, frame relay, ATM, doesn't matter. PPP can be ran over any one of them. And, you, and yes, you can run PPP over frame relay and ATM. It is, it is possible. I've seen it done just a handful of times in uh, more of your legacy environments. And the nice thing about it is it actually adds layer 2 functionality that other uh, other layer 2 medias don't support natively authentication, multi link fragmentation, reliability. Where the default uh, encapsulation for a serial link in Cisco is HDLC or high level data link connection, which literally is just a encapsulation. It doesn't do anything ab ab above and beyond that. And I think there might be, and I'm not even sure there is, I don't even think there's any commands. Uh, yeah, there's, it doesn't support anything above and beyond that. I mean, you can pull an IP address via DHCP with a protocol called SLARP, or Serial Link Address Resolution Protocol. Um, but at the end of the day, basically all you're doing is doing an ARP and you're getting an IP address. So, I mean, I'm not going to show you how that stuff works, but the general idea is um, um, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. So now, uh, PPP negotiation is actually very, very straightforward. So PPP uses a link control protocol, LCP, to negotiate the higher layer protocols. There's the LCP, and LCP is link control protocol, which is going to negotiate things at the lower levels, like um, it's going to bring into play a layer two technology, uh, layer two things, uh, if, um, stuff like that, uh, CDP. Is going to be one of them, and then as it goes up the layer, once LCP is opened and confirmed, then I'll move into the higher level, higher level protocols. We'll get into IPCP, and then we'll get into ipv 6 cp depending on if you're running it over V6, and then we'll get into the NCP, which is going to be the network control protocol. And a network control protocol is how other things like um, layer three addressing and things like that are uh, situated. And then that's when you get into IPCP, and that's actually how with IPCP is how you would negotiate a default route, that's how you would negotiate an IP address, that's how you would negotiate, um, trying to think there's uh, some so there's some other things out there I believe you can do with IPCP, but uh, those are the most common ones you're going to see are going to be an IP address and the um, a default route, and I can show you how to configure those as we go along, but uh, the nice thing about it is PPP will automatically learn um, it's the neighbor's address and mass because of the fact that there should only be two peers on a directly connected link, you and the other guy. So that's one of the nice things about it. And even it, it goes into detail where we uh, address assignment and routing information. So you can get an, an address via IPCP as well as a default route via IPCP. And then um, we'll take a look at going through a um, going through debug PPP negotiation just so we can see how traffic. Uh, how the adjacency comes up and beyond that, but it's actually really, really, really simple to do, and uh, you know, and that, that's pretty much that's pretty straightforward for the most part. And it's really nothing more than just a layer two protocol that is 
really, really easy to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, um, I was doing some, I was playing around with some stuff earlier today, or earlier before I started getting ready for you guys. So I'll run through some commands and show you guys, and explain how stuff works from kind of a high level overview, and then we'll get into um, the details of some other stuff later on. So generally what you're going to do on your configuration here is if we were to go to interface serial 2 slash 0 do show run interface serial 2 slash 0 I already have the encapsulation set up here so what I'm going to type in is um, I'm going to bounce the interface I'm going to type in do debug uh, PPP negotiation and all I'm going to do then is I'm going to turn off do I'm going to do a uh, shut I'm going to shut the port down and then you'll see all the negotiation going on in the background and so we'll say uh, no shut and you're going to see the other ones coming in because I have a connection between 5 and 6 coming up and we're going to say do you all so that so that turns out the debug so if you come back up through here nothing really going on right? it sounds like, it looks like a lot but it's really not so here we have LCP and um, so we did the no shut here. LCP kicked in, let us know that everything was good, going good using default call direction, which basically means bidirectional. And then if you look at these O's and these I's, O stands for an out, uh, an outbound uh, configuration request. And then we have an outbound configuration request again. Sometimes they, they break them up. We have ID1, length 14, ID4. For different for different reasons, then we have an inbound configure question a request. Magic number is just a verification piece for it. And I don't want to go into, into too too much detail on how this stuff works, but as you can see right here, we have an authentication protocol of PAP being detected. And as you can see, it's letting me know that it knows it. It's authenticating, and we have authenticating peer R3. And then we uh, peer phases authenticating unauthenticated user. So basically, what it's going to go through here, and eventually, it's going to authenticate, um, and it's going to go through, and it's going to work. And the we the reason we know it's going to work um, is the fact that we have the configuration already preset. And I'll show you guys how this works coming up. But as you can see, we have install route. So basically, what ended up happening was it authentication worked. Everything looked good. And I didn't have authentication. Uh, debug going on in the background so you guys won't see that but for the most part this is working out I should say completely this is working and if you look here we type in do show IP do show IP route you'll see that I have a, a peer default route plugged in here and this is the neighbor route that's installed from router 3 uh, appearing with router 6 and the reason why it installs a peer route is so that it, it has a dedicated route to the neighbor and it's this is learned this is this is learned and inherent by default in PPP now you can do away with that by doing no PPP peer neighbor peer um, actually, actually actually I think it's uh, I think if we get out of here and type in no PPP uh, actually no it's underneath the interface interface serial 2 slash 0 and say no PPP um, where is it I'm looking for peer I don't see peer no peer neighbor route that's it so if you were to hit that and do that and then do a do show IP route it and uh, bounce the interface it would actually get rid of it so but um, that just goes to show that's one of the options that that, that is out there um, so we have that and then uh, so that's the negotiation so basically with the configure uh, the configuration of PAP so if you're not familiar with PAP PAP is the password authentication protocol and PAP is a two-way authentication method available available for PPP now it, this is the clear text username and password for uh, authenticating a neighbor and I don't know why you would use a um, why you would use P PAP unless your uh, legacy equipment only supports PAP because CHAP is much better and much uh, better to work with than uh, PAP is but you know it's it's still you know it's 
Well, at the end of the day, it's still a protocol you should know for the test. That's why I'm covering it. So the way that we uh, you can do this, and there's three ways of doing it. So PAP is pretty straightforward for the most part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the three ways of doing this. I'm going to type in uh, do show run interface uh, serial 2 slash 0 and type in. Okay, so we have our configuration set there. And what we're going to do is on the other side, on router 3, I'm going to jump up and I'm going to go to interface serial 2 slash 0. Do show run interface serial 2 slash 0. And I'm going to type in PPP. Uh, authentication is PAP. Okay, so I'm going to be challenging the other side, and I'm going to go. I'm going to lose my circuit. Now, the reason why I'm going to lose my circuit, if I type in, I'm going to do no. I'm going to pull this PAP configure right here. I'm going to pull this guy out on the same side on six. Um, and so do sh do show run pipe section user. Now, um, what you're going to need in here is you're going to need either a username and password on this side and or actually you're going to need it on on this side because what you're going to do is on this side you are going to uh, use the um, the local database is what this would be referred to the global configured globally configured username and password you're going to use this to authenticate the other guy now if you were to go to three and type in do show run pipe section user all right so I don't have a username configured on the site now what's gonna what's happening now is if we were to do a debug we have a conf the configuration set up already on uh, six to authenticate three right we have username r3 password zero Cisco what's gonna end up happening uh, with r3 is r3 is going to send a pap message to r6 and saying hey my my username is R3 because that's what the default operation is of the protocol. Is use the globally configured host name. So whatever the host name is, send that as your host name, and whatever the password you have configured globally. You're going to then send that information over. Now I have our username R3 password Cisco sitting here, and what I'm going to do is over on R3, I'm going to type in, I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to type in username, username R6 password of Cisco. Okay. Now, I'm using, and if I type in do show run interface serial 2 slash 0. Okay, so basically what's happening now is neither side is going to authenticate. And the reason for that, if I type in do show run this side, the reason why this is neither side is going to authenticate is because I'm not sending the username, uh, the inf username information across. So both sides are authenticating each other because we both have PPP authentication PAP, and we both have on this side we both have uh, PPP authentication PAP. So what we need to do here is I need to go to interface serial two slash zero and type in PPP PAP sent username is going to be I'm going to send R3 across um, on this or I'm sorry R6 R6 and the password is going to be Cisco and it says you have chosen a username and password that is valid for CHAP and this is a potential security hole okay interesting I'm gonna go over to um, I'm gonna go over to router 6 and I'm gonna type in uh, PPP PAP sent username I'm gonna say the username is gonna be R6. Or wait, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I apologize. We're going to do three. I yeah, Actually, I did it backwards. Um, on R3, I need to do no to this one. So you're sending R3. That's what I made. I, I was like, wait, wait, that doesn't make sense. So you're sending R3. Okay, and then we're going to go over to R6 and do the same thing backwards. But you have to have a username configured on this side to receive it. All right, that's why I configured that username R6 so that when R6 would send it, it would have a global, global uh, username password configured. I'm going to say uh, R6 and I'm sorry R3 password is Cisco. Now, I'm sorry R6. Not R3. 
Now they're both authenticating each other. Okay. There's this one. There's this way to do it. Okay. You have this way. You have the other way where you could go and configure. Well, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to type in. We're going to uh, do a shut on this interface. So we're going to take the circuit down. And I'm gonna actually going to take this command right here off. And the reason why I'm going to take this one off is because I don't want three to authenticate six because three and six are connected right here. I want to authentic. I want R6 to authenticate three because R6 is already the provider. So I'm going to type in no. Right click on this guy and hit enter. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to. Um, I'm going to let's see here. Do I have to? Um, let's see here. I don't need to do. I need to have the R3 and uh, the R3 username, but I don't need to go. So do show run interface serial two slash zero. I don't need to have this in here. I don't need to have that in there because I'm going to be doing the authentication on our three side. So we have this and so do show run interface serial two slash zero. So I still have the path this side so I'm going to authenticate this side. So I'm going to type in no shut and so the circuit should come right back up. And it does. And line and then protocol. So do ping 36.0.0.1. Good. I have reachability. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now I'm going to do something very similar on R6, but I'm going to do bidirectional. And so we've authenticated with PAP both two way and from the customer to the provider. Now, to take this one step farther, what you need here is do show run pipe section user. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I have a globally configured username. And I'm going to do the same thing on the, on R3 backwards because you have to make uh, by, because by default when pa when PAP or CHAP tries to authenticate, it's going to send its locally configured username as the or as the host name as the username. So all I'm going to do on R3 is I'm going to type oh, I'm going to go to three and type in I'm going to exit out of here and type in uh, username is going to be uh, ccnp r3. I'm sorry, r5 or r6, r6, r6 with a password of ccnp 2015. Okay. Now I'm going to type in interface serial two slash zero. I'm going to type in uh, the uh, PPP authentication is going to be chap. And when you do this, you when you type this in, both sides are going to authenticate each other. So I'm going to go to um, interface serial 2 slash 1. I'm going to type in PPP authentication is uh, chap. Okay. Why is that flapping? So do show run interface serial 2 slash 1. Okay, so I have that configured there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to R3. I did it again, and R3, and do show run interface serial two slash zero. And here I have this configured. So I'm actually going to, I'm sorry, I'm on R5. I'm on R5. I meant. Uh, oh, I, I see why it I see why it went down. So PPP authentication is PAP. And interface serial. I'm on the I'm on the wrong box. Uh, do show run pipe section user. Make sure I didn't type in the wrong password. Yes, I did. So I'm going to go to R5 and do this. So uh, username is going to be uh, ccnp dash R6. User or a password is uh, CCNP 2015. I'm going to go to interface serial 2 slash 0 and I'm going to type encapsulation PPP. I'm going to type in PPP authentication is CHAP. 
So if I'm gonna five and six are going to have to authenticate each other. So six should be ready to go. Let's make sure I can ping. Do ping. 36.0.0.2. Cool. I can ping that. That's a good sign. So on five, I'm going to go to, because I'm using a unique username and password on both sides. So do show run pipe section user. I'm using this authentication me mechanism here, as you can see. And I'm going to say no to this guy. Yeah, that's fine. And we go to six and do show run pipe section user. Just make sure I have everything ready to go before I go f f through with this. Okay, so we're going to authenticate each other as we go along here. So I'm going to go under interface serial two slash one here. I'm going to type in PPP. Uh, let's actually do a do show IP interface brief. So we are down between that. So I can't ping it. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to type in PPP chap host name is going to be ccnp dash r6 and the pa and hit enter i'm going to and then i'm going to say the uh password is ccnp 2015 okay I'm gonna, now i have to do the other side now to go to r3 or i'm sorry r5 and i have to type in interface serial 2 sl or uh 2 slash 0 and type in ppp chap host name is ccnp-r5 because that's what I'm sending over there and I have to type in ppp uh, chap password is ccnp2015 now as soon as this authenticates I should get a link up momentarily because that's what we have to send to the other side that's what the other side should be uh, waiting to receive. And oh, interface serial. I'm actually underneath there. No shut. Ta-da! I was like, why is this not coming up? So interface should come up, and so should protocol. I've only got interface up though. So, all right. So they're they, they're saying that they're both up. But that's not true. So let's make see what's going on here. Our five is saying that it's up. So do ping fifty six dot zero dot zero dot one. Okay. Clearly have an issue here. And I'm not sure why this is causing me a problem. That should not be happening. So let's see here. Let's go to six. Let's do a let's jump out here and do a debug PPP authentication. And see what's going on here. Okay, so it's seeing both come in. All right, so let me do a you all here. This is why I do the the quick debug. Okay. So it's it's detecting on five that it's sending the the pa the interface level as you can see right here. Um, but it's telling me the interface is failed. So let's see here. Let me do a show run pipe section user. Do I have the usernames reversed? Maybe that's the problem. Let me do go to global config and no and pull this guy out and change it. Yes, that's fine. And username 
ccnp-r6 password of ccnp2015 and do the same thing on 5 and no username ccnp-r6 one too many np or er, uh, dash r6 uh, password of ccnp2015 and we're going to use username of ccnp-r5 with a uh, password of ccnp2015 and then we're going to go to uh, do show run interface serial 2 slash 0 and we're going to change that up so we're going to go to uh, now we're authenticating both each other both ways remember so I'm going to go to interface seri serial 2 slash 0 and type in ppp chap uh, host name is ccnp dash r6 even though and let's type in do show run real quick okay that changed the host name even though technically that's not correct and then we're going to do a interface serial 2 slash 0 and we're going to type in ppp chap host name is ccnp dash r5 do show run interface serial 2 slash oh I did it again I'm doing the wrong interface that's what the problem is There it goes. That's better. So, all right. So two slash one is up now. So do show IP interface brief. Okay, that's better. So do ping fifty six dot zero dot zero dot two. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Now, let's take this down a notch, and we're gonna go to we're appearing authenticating five to six. Okay. So I'm going to go back to 6, I'll type in do show run interface serial 2 slash 1. I'm going to go to interface serial 2 slash 1. I'm going to type in no this and no this. That's going to take us down, which is fine. So, and then again, do show. Alright, so we're just authenticating right at this point, right? So what I'm going to do now on 5 is now it's, it's showing me the circuits up. Now what I'm going to do is on this side is I'm going to go to interface serial 2 slash 0 I'm going to type in no PPP authentication chap. Okay, so do show run inter interface serial 2 slash 0 alright so I just have the username and password being sent right so that's all I'm going to be looking for because I'm doing that I'm going to type in uh, shut I'm going to see if it comes back up. If it comes back up, I know my, my config is good. And then I'm going to type in no shut. If everything comes back up, we know the config is, is operational. Okay, so it came back up. And so do ping uh, 56.0.0.1. So that's a good sign. Now, normally what you would do is you would configure the host name on 6 to be um, which you want this guy to authenticate as. Because right now this is R5, not R6. But we want to authenticate 5 to 6. So it's working at the moment. That's what I want to leave it as. I'm not going to mess with anything beyond that. But that's how you would authenticate PAP and CHAP and the, and the various uh, ways of uh, doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 6. I'm going to type in do show run pipe section user. And I'm going to tweak this a little bit. I'm going to type this guy in here. Let me uh, actually exit out here. And I'm going to type this guy in. And I'm going to type in no. Okay, yep, that's fine. It's going to break it's going to bring me down cuz I'm not authenticating. 
and I'm going to go on this, um, I'm going to go on 5, interface uh, serial 2 slash 1, I'm going to type in no and pull this guy out, because that's the wrong host name at this point. So I'm going to type in, um, no PPP chap interface serial 2 slash 1 um, and pull this out no and why is it giving me a hard time with that do show run interface serial interface serial 2 slash 1 R5 Oh, two slash zero. Sorry, I'm like, what the heck? No, and pull this PPP command out. Just didn't make any sense. I was like, why is it doing that? There we go. So now, if we go back to six, um, we type in do show IP interface brief. Um, let's go in interface serial. 2 slash 1 and shut it down. Alright, so now we're going to do is we're going to go over to, to, to 5 and we're going to type in PPP chap hostname is going to be CCNP dash R5 and that PPP chap password is going to be CCNP 2015. Okay, now we're going to go to R, R6. I'm going to do a do show run pipe section user we should have nothing coming in with that information. And I'm going to type in no shut. And that should not bring the both line up. I should just bring line up, not protocol. So we have interface. We have link up. So do show IP interface brief, which is good. Now what I need to do is I need to exit out of here. Do show run interface serial 2 slash 1. And as you can see, I have chap enabled. Now what I need to do is I need to create a username of ccnp-r5 with a password of ccnp2015 there it goes so now I've authenticated successfully and by doing that because this configuration matches what I have configured here and so by doing that type in do ping uh, 56.0.0.1 and I can ping it that's a great sign so that's that is PPP in all of its great forms um, uh, then, there again, it's not very difficult to work with. You just have to know what you're doing with it. And uh, yeah, I did stumble a little bit there, but no big deal. We can uh, get around that. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually work on doing PPPoE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure uh, router one and router two to be server and client. So two is going to be the server, one is going to be the client, and we're going to uh, I'm going to rip it out once we're done because I don't want to have that to be a problem in our network. Uh, we're going to peer two to one via PPPoE and get that connection going and make sure everything can work. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.